Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Media Live from our news hub here at Adesawa in Kandakra. My name is Park Wissiasari, bringing the very latest in business, sports, and international news. And coming up in the bulletin. President Akufuadu has assented the right to information bill into law. Also, Free Media Vanguard issues one-week ultimatum to National Communications Authority to reopen Radio Gold and Radio XYZ. And elsewhere on the international front, Huawei founder Ren Henvier remains defiant towards U.S. moves against his company, saying the U.S. underestimates its abilities. We've got details of all these stories plus many more coming up in the next 60 minutes. We're streaming live on Facebook. You're reminded to join us with the views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. Uh, our social media handle is TV3GH. Uh, share comments with us on Facebook and on Twitter. Now, the police administration has begun the process to recruit more medical personnel this year. The administration has earlier confirmed um, the appointment of 18 medical personnel who were working as local. Uh, these were revealed at the 2018 Police Hospital Wasa here in Accra. All staff strength of the police health management stood at a little over 320. The staff numbers were spread across the police hospital in Accra and 14 other clinics across the country. The low number, according to management, has been a challenge on effective health care delivery as officers often had to sacrifice their time and energy to stay at post in order to save lives. Some of the medical personnel, we were told, would sometimes forfeit their leave in order to save situations. Following persistent calls by management, the police administration has set itself up to improve the situation. First was the appointment of health professionals who were working as locums. At least the appointment of 18 of such personnel has been confirmed. I must say they did very well by absorbing into our midst those who, who were working with us on local. They've all been given appointment letters to be part of us. And what we are appealing is that the recruitment will be done. We need our health workers so that we can give them better service. The police hospital is also expanding infrastructure to improve the conditions of patients who visit the facility for health care services. The bed capacity at the executive ward and outpatient department have been increased. So in addition, we will have about nine executive wards to make our clients and patients comfortable when they are sick to heal. We also have five separately bedded female wards COP Alex Amponsa Esiama is the director of services at the police headquarters. Efforts are underway to recruit medical staff to support what we are doing. So very soon, we are going to see an increase in the number of medical staff that works at the police hospital. He urged personnel to maintain the feet chalked in order to maintain quality of health care. The Free Media Vanguard this morning staged a peaceful demonstration through the principal streets of Accra uh, and uh, subsequently presented a petition to the National Communications Authority. Uh, the protest uh, was uh, with regards to uh, the close down, the shutdown of Radio Gold and Radio XYZ um, a week ago. And um, I'm just going to be speaking to a member of the, the movement uh, pretty soon. All right, so I'm going to be speaking to Prince Minka, uh, who just joined me in the studio right now. Prince is the convener for the Free Media Vanguard. There yeah, are colleagues in the media that the offen unfairness is seen in a situation where managers of these stations made themselves available to go through the processes 
of getting things right as far as the uh, license acquisition or reapplication of their license is concerned, but they were not given the opportunity to do so. That is where we see unfairness. The unfairness is seen, especially when uh, Suleiman Abraima refers to what is seen on the website of the National Communications Authority, the last quarter of 2018, where the list of radio stations in good standing had, uh, you could see Radio XYZ and Radio Gold and many others that, that, had, that, that were involved in this recent shutdown. And you ask yourself, why? You ask yourself, why were the managers not given the opportunity? So let's take away all the political sentiments mm. and look at the issue as it is. Okay, so you it presented is, a is, petition. Yes. Hold on, Bridge. You presented a petition to the NCA today. What was contained in that petition? What was contained in that petition? Okay. Here's what was contained in the petition. And I'm doing this in protest. So you're, you're going to keep you, you know, I'll, shutting I'll, your yeah, mouth? Yeah, I'll keep shutting my mouth. Mm. And, and we, are, we are doing this in order to power pressure on the National Communications Authority. So what we've was already, contained We've given the them a one-week ultimatum, right. okay? And we're just appealing to their conscience in that, in that petition. We've listed why we think that these radio, the, the shutting down of these radio stations were done unjustifiably and they were not fair. We've stated that in the petition. And we've given them a one-week ultimatum to act as a matter of urgency. And in as much as they enforce the law, they should apply wisdom. Failure to reopen the stations, what are you going to do? We'll continue to do this. And do you think Ghanaians will like it when they wake up in the morning and you see those pictures there? Forget the political faces you see on your screen. And I'm sure your, your director is going to put that up on, on the screen so that people will see. You see Mugabe Masi over there. You see radio personalities over there. And these are people, those people in the crowd who are with us this morning, mm. wake up in the morning, listening to them in the afternoon, and listen to them in the evening. So I, I hear and, you and say on that their, they, on their I platform, hear you let, say, me, let me just make a point, yeah. just a minute. Mm. On their platforms, they are given the opportunity to express themselves. Mm. Today, they can no longer do so. What does that mean? I hear you say that the NCA is within its rights to essentially regulate activities within the media space. Um, as a station, don't you consider that if you think that they've done an arbitrary, uh, they've taken an arbitrary action, you'd also resort to legal means? I sit here as convener of Free Media Vanguard, mm. a pressure group made up of journalists like myself and you. And of course, we invite you to be a part of this call. Today, it was a protest march for journalists and Ghanaians who want to see a trend where we continue to enjoy the media freedom. Mm. I can only speak for uh, free media vanguard and we are against this trend that's why we did a protest march but i can only express my opinion based on the question that you just asked mm. because i know and i have facts to point that i am sure the station managers talk about radio gold and radio xyz and many others that are, are, considering, down, legal. are considering that particular path and I am sure as we speak now the reason you're seeing protests petitioning of the international community all this is aimed at appealing to the conscience of the political authority. Failure to act. Failure to act. There will be more pressure. And which when there's, when there's, legal. Which includes legal actions, which includes protests. And we have the right to protest. You saw what happened in Tahir Square. We can choose to mass up where we massed up this morning. We can choose to sit there, continue to protest every day, and continue to make our voices heard, even though they've shut our voices on the frequency modulation 93.1 and 90.5. Thank you very much, Prince Minka. is convener of the Free Media Vanguard. They staged a demonstration this morning to protest the shutdown of Radio Gold and Radio XYZ. They subsequently presented a petition to the National Communications Authority. They've essentially given them a, a one-week ultimatum to reopen the station's failure to do so. Uh, they're going to uh, power more pressure on government. Well, so uh, away from that, the president, Leonardo Danko Akufado, has signed into law a bill guaranteeing the right to information. Now, the right to information bill was finally passed by Parliament after nearly two decades of relentless campaigns by local rights groups. The law will take effect from January 2020 after the President's assent. The law will ease citizens' access to information from public offices and officials when it comes into effect. It is also expected to disarm um, office holders from arbitrarily holding back critical documents like details of contracts signed on behalf 
of the state uh, from the media. Now, the right to information law will also uh, give meaning to Article 21, Clause 1 of the 1992 Constitution, which states that all persons shall have the right to information subject to such qualifications and laws as are necessary in a democratic society. All right, so uh, we're going to stay a while longer on the subject. It's one of our top stories for the day. Let's get a reaction from civil society. I've just been joined by Esther Aholi, uh, who is Programs Officer with the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative. She's live on Skype. Thank you very much, Esther, for your time. I'm sure you've been following the latest development on this. What's your very latest um, reaction to this? Thank you, and thank you to your viewers. Um, yes, I've been following this, um, the current development. We heard about it. Um, around nine, and we've been uh, monitoring monitoring the I mean the media space just to have a look at what is going on. And talking about my reactions, I am happy, I am um, excited because there has been a very long journey. So for us to come to this um, to this stage, it is something that is very commendable. And so we want to congratulate the whole of Ghana for this breakthrough and for this victory. We know that, and as we know, this is just the beginning of the process. I mean, talking about how this is not going to access the information, have access to information and all that. This is just the beginning of the process. So we hope that going forward, we will all come on board to see this law become a reality in the life of Ghana. Uh, Esther, we know this is going to ease citizens' um, access to information, but even before this was passed, I know the Right to uh, Information Coalition and your group as well had raised uh, objections to certain portions of the bill that, that, that has just been assented into law. Uh, do you still hold those reservations moving forward? Um, yes, indeed. We, at the latter end, we were still talking about certain few areas that um, we could have ironed out with regards to what we have now. But as we've been communicating uh, since the, the law was passed by parliament, what we have presently is something that we can work with. It's something that we can um, make it function for now. And then as, as time goes on, some of the challenges that we face, we can use to correct some of the issues that we were talking about. But as we speak now, the law that has been signed by the president it's a workable one. It's a good one. I mean, we cannot get a perfect one. So for that one, we just have to move forward and ensure that what we have been given, we work with it. So we, we will not say that we still hold on to what we said, what we've been saying. And we are not saying that it's a stand completely. But what we are saying is that Ghanaians should now focus on the fact that this law is something that we can work with. So we should all come on board and use it. Again, Esther, one of the contentious issues that came up uh, was the fact that people would have to pay to access that information. Uh, is this not uh, sort of, um, uh, uh, you know, sort of an affront to the, uh, you know, to freedom of, 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 of information, if you ask me? No, my brother, because if you check um, what the law says, the payment is not just about any payment. It is very specific. The law is very specific on the fees that you are going to pay. You are just paying the cost for the reproduction. I'm sure when you go to every, I mean, shops to go and do photocopy, you do pay for the, uh, the service of the photocopy. So that is what we are talking about. That is the fees we are talking about. The fees is the reproduction of the information. So, for instance, if the information is going to be put on a CD for you, we don't expect government to incur those costs. So that is the cost. We are talking, that's the fee we are talking about, the CD, the cost of the CD. If you want it on a pen drive, it's an audio version that you want on a pen drive. That is what you are going to pay for. So that is the fee we are talking about. So the fee is just to reproduce the information for you. It is not just to pay the rights, because the rights is already given to us. So talking about the fee, what we have now in the law says that you would only have to pay for the reproduction of the information for you. And then the reproduction, to our best of understanding, is about if you want it on a hard, a, a hard copy, then you pay for the cost of the a photocopying. If you want it on a pen drive, you pay for the cost of the pen drive. If you want it on a CD, you pay for the cost of the CD. That is what the fee means. Uh, very finally, uh, Esther, many feel that this law largely will benefit uh, media practitioners and journalists. Uh, is that the case? 
Yes, indeed. They, they are part of the people that are going to benefit from it. But it doesn't mean that the law is actually meant for the media alone. Because um, anybody, anybody can just go into a public institution and go and request for information. It is not only um, media people that can go and, and, and ask for information. And again, let's also bear in mind that there's a part, there's a part of the law that talks about proactive disclosure. That is our public institutions proactively disclosing information to the general public. I don't think that those those proactive those information that will be proactively disclosed will only benefit the, the media. This is something that is coming out for the benefit of the general public. Public. So the the idea that has been going on the um, notion that this law is for the media. We've like you said, we've been on this advocacy for a very long time, and for each platform that we get, we try to explain to the people that this is something for everybody, for the ordinary Ghanaian, for every citizen, and therefore it is not something that is just for the media. So we are all going to benefit from it, depending whether if you are going to make good use of it. And like I said, even if you don't go and request for information, like the, maybe the media will go and seek for information, there's an aspect of the law that deals with the public institutions also coming out without anybody coming to ask from them, coming out to give the general public certain basic information about the work that they do. Esther, I thank you very much. Esther Holly is Programs Officer with the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative. Away from that, three people were injured at Menya Ponguno in the lower Manyakoba district of the eastern region when mass disconnection exercised by power distribution services, PDS, turned chaotic. Now, a police reinforcement team had to throw tear gas during an alleged attack by the youth who had reportedly chased out staff of PDS in the community to carry out the exercise. Reinforcement from Akonsombo and Ekropon had to be called in to maintain law and order. The mass disconnection in the area <clears throat> beg your pardon, has become necessary due to the failure by many residents in the area to pay their electricity bills since 2017. A feud between residents and workers of the then ECG 10 bloody in 2017 when irate youth in Somenia attacked its office for over billing, damaging police vehicles and other property in the violent attacks. You're still watching Media Life here on TV3. We're streaming live on Facebook. Uh, your views, comments, and reactions are welcome on any of our top stories today. Uh, you can visit our social media feed. It's TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. The Electoral Commission of Ghana has scheduled Friday, June 7 to Thursday, June 27 as a period to undertake this year's limited voter registration exercise. At a news conference in Accra, the chair of the commission, Jean Mensah, said the exercise will take place in all districts in the country instead of elected the registration will be conducted in the various district offices and selected electoral areas and the ec will depend on available modern technological machines to cut costs and the decision that the commission made was a brave one to say that no we are not going to go with obsolete technology that is going to cost this nation more money and so you should be patting us on the backs and not raising issues with People are not going to be registered and that sort of thing. It was a decision to save this country a lot of money. At least we have those kits there already. We do not have to procure more kits and incur high costs, both with the VMS. And if, that's why we are doing it in selected electoral areas, to refurbish the kits that we can find from the regions. Jen Mensa indicated the EC has put in place measures to deal with challenges that will hinder the smooth registration exercise. The commission will hire standby generators to be used in district offices and polling centers in the selected electoral areas during power outages throughout the registration process. The commission is also engaging the power distribution services of Ghana to ensure uninterrupted power supply during the registration process. She stated there will not be online registration as circulated earlier, adding that a comprehensive campaign will be rolled out from Wednesday, May 22. The Commission is ready to undertake the limited voters registration exercise from the 7th of June to the 27th of June 2019. 
it is the hope and expectation of the Commission that with the measures put in place, we would witness a successful registration exercise. She added the time for the registration and the period of the exercise can be extended if valid reasons are found. Right, and on our MTN video report today, our citizen journalist Ayita Abdul Samed reports on the poor state of a road at Bongo Namu in the Upper East region. This road was constructed in the year 2008. Up to now, nothing has been done on it. And it is a road that links the people of Akubia and Abelinzanga. But you can see the nature of this road due to the heavy downpour and has even destroyed some part of the farmlands where people used to cultivate their crops. People now use it for open defecation. Cholera is the major disease that always affects us. The government and the DCE come to our aid. This is concerned citizen Ayata Abdul Somed Akaluti reporting from Bongo Namo. And just like our citizen journalist Abdul, you can also send your video report via WhatsApp to 055-1433044. That's 055-1433044. Right, welcome back to the business news segment on, on Midday Life here on TV3. Now, Ghana has expressed a desire to stimulate greater engagement with Serbia in line with government's aspirations to move relations beyond the usual aid and trade. Meanwhile, both countries have reiterated the need to deepen relations by reopening diplomatic missions in their respective countries. Relations between the two countries date back to the 1950s when leaders of the two countries worked together to form the non-aligned movement NAM. The movement bonded the two countries with the objective of promoting global peace and security through the policy of non-alignment. In a meeting with the first Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Serbia, Evita Datsit and Ghana's Foreign and Regional Integration Minister, Shelly Ayokobotri, the two mutually agreed and stressed on their government's desire to stimulate greater engagement. We have looked at several ways that we need to cooperate. Apart from the fact that we have already, on my visit, um, signed the political consultations agreement, we also believe that there is the need to quickly assemble our technical teams to look at the way we are going to cooperate. She expressed her appreciation for the visit and reiterated the need to deepen relations. I have made it clear to our um, uh, visiting delegation, especially to my colleague, that Ghana under the presidency of His Excellency Kufuado is moving away from aid um, to trade. And so that is the focus. And um, there are several areas for them to invest in. And the area of our one district, one factory, which is um, under the agro-processing that we've discussed. The first deputy prime minister and minister for foreign affairs of Serbia Evita Datsits, who spoke through an interpreter, said Serbia's embassy in Ghana will be opened this year. Uh, but I think that uh, cooperation, uh, economic cooperation, leaves very much to desire and we should do better. He said all countries should remain neutral while awaiting the outcome on Kosovo. What we kindly ask uh, all countries uh, is uh, to wait until and uh, keep uh, the neutrality, status neutrality, until the dialogue is over. Uh, once the dialogue is over, uh, we, we, we are going to have the outcomes of that dialogue and then uh, those outcomes is going uh, uh, on United Nations and then uh, the countries can 
decide uh, whether they will respect that outcome. In other news, government is to increase the productive capacity of the country to help stabilize the occasional fall of the local currency against major trading currencies. Dr. Mohamed Bamiya said more investments will be done in the processing and value addition of crops for exports to address the city depreciation. He was speaking as a panelist at the 2019 Chief Executive Officer Summit in Accra. The city depreciated by 26.7% and further downwards to 26.1% in 2015. It again went down to 3.3% in 2016 and slightly inched up to 3.7% in 2017. And for the first half of 2018, it depreciated by 2.4%. In January this year, it also depreciated by 11%. Government has initiated steps to address the continuous depreciation of the currency. As a panelist at the 2019 CEO Summit, the Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Baumia, assured the employers of increasing the productive capacity of the country to stabilize the city. A lot of the one district, one factory proposals that are being implemented are mainly in agro processing. Over 70% of them are in. This is the sort of thing that we need to do to reduce our dependence on imports uh, and also increase exports. Uh, that will fundamentally determine the stability of the country. But at the end of the day, you also have to manage your macro well. On the banking sector, the Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Baumia, defended the decision to shut down some banks for failing to meet the Bank of Ghana requirements. We've been able to save the deposits of about 1.5 million people, depositors, been able to, to do that. And so the, the system was really weak and, and, and on the verge of collapse, and they've had to come in to, to, to implement a, a, a consolidation process. Uh, and, and so it is, not, um, it is not going to be done in one day. In other news, um, and still on the banking front, a banking consultant, Dr. Rich Chiahene, has bemoaned enforcement as a weakest link in Ghana's laws. Reacting to the central bank's directive to companies, institutions and individuals to stop charging in foreign currencies, he stressed the need for regular checks, especially at hotels, to ensure conformity at all times. According to the central bank, the Foreign Exchange Act 2006 Act 723 prohibits the pricing, advertising and receipt or payment for goods and services in foreign currency. Said violations, according to Bank of Ghana, are punishable by summary conviction, a fine of up to 700 penalty units or a prison term of not more than 18 months or both. The Bank of Ghana in a statement noted that the sole legal tender in Ghana is the city and Peswa. Reacting to the directive to companies, institutions and individuals to stop quoting goods and services in foreign currency, banking consultant Dr. Richmond Etuahene bemoaned enforcement as the weakest link in Ghana's laws. There is no continuity in what we want to do. In Chi, that is the police philosophy in Ghana. It will start boom, then it gets cold. But in other jurisdictions like in India, it is part of them. It's an embedded. When we say compliance is embedded. It means each and everyone understand what compliance is about. He recommended regular checks to these institutions, especially hotels, to ensure conformity. What about those who are foreign investors who are, who are setting hotels? Can they do the same thing in their country? No. But we look on concern and even go there and pay and sing hallelujah colors for them. We must be a nation of full compliance and enforcement. Meanwhile, the Bank of Ghana has also warned of severe consequences for persons who flout its rules concerning the importation and exportation of foreign currency. Assembly members from the Tamale Metropolis and Sanirugu Municipality have resolved to support uh, an end to sand, winning, uh, sand mining activities around the White Volta Lake. The resolution was made after a tour of the palming and treatment sites of the Ghana Water Company Limited at Dulon and Nawuni in the northern region. Here's a report from my colleague Zubeda Ishmael. 
The Ghana Water Company in the northern region has revealed it loses between 22 to 28% of the total supply, which is pegged at 45,000 cubic meters a day. Ideally, the company must lose only 5% while treating water for consumption. This has affected production, causing a drop from the 45,000 cubic meters daily to between 32 to 35,000 cubic meters a day. This translates to 20 gallons of water lost for every 100 gallons produced. The percentage, according to the company, is equivalent to water needed to supply parts of Salaga and Yendi. The losses have been attributed to the activities of sand winners around the buffer zones of the water extraction point in Dolong and Nauni. It is against this background that Ghana Water Company has embarked on a series of activities including facility visits with assembly members. The visit is to afford the assembly members an opportunity to appreciate the destruction caused to the source of raw water by sand mining activities. And I've realized that most of the things is not deliberated because from where we have started and where we are, I've realized that they, ha they are facing a lot of challenges which stakeholders need to intervene and the problem will be solved. The Ghana Water Company Limited has warned some challenges will be confronted at the West Gonja District and Yendi Municipality if steps are not taken to curb the situation. The assembly members were encouraged to intensify education when they return to their communities. The Ghana Water Company Limited had earlier taken some members and leaders of the Tipper Truck Association on the same trip. That's all for the bulletin. Immense appreciation to the producers, directors and cameramen. My name is Parkwis Yasaru. See you later. Bye-bye.